Hi friends, I have the honor of introducing to you Dr. Prerna Gurg. Heartiest congratulations, Prerna. How how are you feeling today? Thank you so much, sir. I'm feeling very happy. It's sort of, it's overwhelming. I don't think the feeling sunk in yet. And you know, it it must have been like a relief. So, you know, so it was it, it was it was a big relief yes yeah, sir has it sunk in it's uh, no it quite so it's an honor to be sitting here with you it's and totally with the and you know it's you know my honor is double because you know we have been interacting with her for last 4 years i think now yes, she sir. came to us in her pre foundation year in the yes. pathology microbiology classes yes, then she followed up with foundation then test and discussion yes sir so you know it has been a long journey with dams Uh, how how was the journey with dams for you so it was quite incredible it showed me exactly what to do to get here there was no confusion and i think that's really important given the time constraints uh i could not have done this without dams how how, how did you manage you know when you entered our classes as a second year mbbs for yes, the first sir. time you know you must have you know almost no idea like of what the kind of do. world i'm getting yes, into so how did you manage those classes at that time and you know what would you advise future people who are joining in pre foundation or foundation years to do uh i think uh, definitely join as soon as you can start preparing uh the notes are very good it's all about repetition and retaining those notes uh they're very high yield there's no need to go anywhere else no gu- no other books no guide books nothing just stick to the matter you have and be very thorough with it Were you like uh, the classroom learner type? Like were you putting yes, in sir. the effort to learn in the class, like consciously? Yes, I think uh, just reading the notes does not solve your purpose at all, because the teachers are there not just to give you information; they're telling you how to apply it in a question. Questions are not no longer testing exact fact based. कि तुम्हें वहीं लिखा हुआ मिलेगा वही था आंसर. They're seeing if you can apply what you know. to a different situation and that's what teachers teach you they teach you how to understand it and not just retain it but re- really internalize what what's being taught about did you always enjoy your time in the classroom like you were always i there i really did you know we, I, i remember you know you were always on the i think front rows yes sir <laughs> so were you always on the you know um, you know trying to gain the maximum out of a teacher Yes sir I think uh, you should try to learn as much as you can in the class be really focused it's not just about making notes make good notes which you can read later which you can understand do all your colors and diagrams try to pictureize almost everything and the teachers will really help you in that uh, just reading the notes won't do anything for you and you know once you had uh, understood in the class you made notes and then did you go about giving the tests class tests yes sir i uh, sir i joined the tnds in my internship year uh before uh, i was i was in touch with my notes before this also uh i think throughout my four years i focused a lot on textbooks but uh, there is lots of concepts especially for final year which were covered really well in these notes medicine surgery obs gynae i did entirely from notes for my final year exams too Uh, and I think that's been the trend at Mamsi for a really long time now. Given the sort of examinations we have, the topics covered here are very important. They give you great concepts. You can apply them. You need to read your textbooks and you need to build up on them because these topics are really oriented towards your exams. But be in touch with the course material. Uh, I joined TND in the internship year. That's the first time I started doing MCQs, and I taking tests was really important because I. It's initially I really didn't do well on the tests because I had no practice I used to leave questions that I didn't know uh so I think you need to take a test in the setting ki aisa hi exam mein hoga and believe ki this result is the one that's going to make a difference and that's how you learn to solve mcqs because in your exam it's never going to be like ki tumne sare mcqs dekhe honge so there's always going to be questions you've never seen before and you've to learn how to trust your gut in them and you need to attempt them um i think you know that's a very very important point that you have put it up i think that is the key like whenever you're giving a test or a mock test Sometimes I see students who do what they know and they leave what the, they don't know. Yeah. But actually, in the real exam, what you don't know and how you think on what you don't know 
is the key to getting a top yes. rank. And this is where you apply the understanding that you yes, developed yes, in yes, class. Yes, yes, I think it's very beautifully put. It's very important, you know, what she's saying is golden. It is very, very important for everybody to know that, you know, do not give a test lightly. I've seen many people will give a test. And then you, you err in the end because in the real exam, you will not be able to leave it so easily. Your life, your career, everything is dependent, dependent on, on those yes. questions. And if you try to give mock tests as if they are the real exams, you will have that edge later. Yes. And uh, the discussions after the test are really useful because the teachers will teach you how to solve the question based on the options given instead of the question. They'll teach you that you knew this. So why couldn't you arrive at the answer? Even though it's something that you didn't explicitly know, you could have reached there and that's something you'll gain in your discussions as well. So did you go back after it and did you re-look at the things that you've done wrong at least before you start the next? Yes sir, so this was one of the strategies that was discussed on, I think on the club, ki one, take a grand test and then figure out what your weak areas are and look at it subject wise and that's something I did after my AMs and PGI exams and um, I realized there were some subjects which I was consistently doing bad at and which I just assumed ki I was doing decently in. So I really worked on that and I think that made a big difference because you uh, th the grand test that you have at DAMS will give you subject wise uh, distribution that these are the number of questions, these are the number of questions you got right and they give you time of review also that's really useful how much time you spent doing the exam and then how much time you spent reviewing those questions so I think uh, definitely take grand test and look through their analysis. No, when I, you know, look back at your strategy, it started with, you know, starting early, you know, that was one of yes, the big sir. things that you did. Then you did focus on the classroom learning in the initial part, yes, note making, sir. and wh wherever you wanted to add on things, you go went towards the standard books. Yes, sir. But then in internship, you shifted towards test and discussion, grant test, yes, MCQ solving. And then uh, another thing that I think worked for you was giving the test seriously. Yes, sir. And then even more beautifully, what she has done is she has, you know, always checked her mistakes. Yes, sir. Because many people are very happy that, okay, I'm good at this. But she was always trying to find out what See, I'm bad at. Yes. So that I can improve and reach there. to the level that yes, she has reached today. Yes, sir. You know, very, very, very important. Yet. And I, then, you know, did you also give the CBT that we conducted in the simulated environment? Yes. Um, I think both of the CBTs were like landmark moments for me. Uh, the first CBT was just before AIMS and that was the first time I felt like maybe I can do this. Before this, I didn't have a lot of confidence because I wasn't be, uh, wasn't studying a lot because of internship. Uh, so I got a decent rank on the first CBT and I, I it really boosted my confidence and gave me the last push for the exams. Uh, the second CBT, I did really badly at the one that happened after AIMS. And I felt that I'd become slightly complacent maybe that if I get a similar rank in NEET, that'll, that, that solves the purpose. But then again, that brought me back to reality that now is the time to really work hard. So I'd recommend everybody take your CBTs and take them seriously. Go home, check the results, check the solutions and it can't get better than this. You can't go and take the exam again and again, but you can do this. Yeah, I would like to add here is that CBT adds that element of seriousness also. Yes, it like is. whenever you're giving a grand test, howsoever you may try to do it, but at the back of your mind, you're in a comfortable environment. You're sitting at your home or your college. Yes, sir. You know, somebody is giving you a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all comfort is there. But in the real battle, there's no comfort. So when you come to CBT, you're in a computer center. Now there is no comfort. Yes, sir. That, that home environment is gone. Sometimes you might be getting a little disturbed by some somebody saying something or some uh, mo noise. Yes, but sir. that is how the real exam is. So then that makes you learn a little bit more about yourself that how you react to that stress. Yes, and sir. I believe that if you give the AIMS exam in November or May without giving a CBT, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yes, you, you, you definitely do are. that rehearsal in your, you know, entire your adrenergic and your noradrenaline, yes, and in your ad adrenal gland has to know how to respond. Yes. How much it's adrenaline should be secreted properly. <laughs> and, and it's really good for the competition. You realize how much people are studying. Sitting at home, it's very easy to get complacent. What was your rank in, you know, CBT 1 and 2? So my rank in CBT one was around 150 I think my rank in CBD 2 was 2000 and so that was know, just before me maybe that, that again opened your eyes that okay <laughs> yes, but I'm exactly. 
Yes. And then there was a month after that to you to know get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, did you also utilize the Facebook group that we have and I'm I'm sure you know I know the answer already but <laughs> you know, I want to know because I've seen you tagging people and answering on yes. quizzes. So what what was your experience with the dams uh, club? Uh I think the club is a really great place to ask doubts first of all there's lots of controversies being created by various sources that people have so it's a great place to get any concepts that you need cleared uh there's lots of updates being posted all the time i was not very regular with the updates initially but eventually i caught on i could screenshot i used to highlight on my device whatever i felt was important and needed to be read later and then by the end i had this uh by the end i removed all other pictures from my phone and i only had all these updates and things to remember types uh, so i could revise that before the exam and um the club is really good for videos and questions and discussions i think it keeps you active and it everybody is wasting time on facebook just so i i have i made two facebook account i had one facebook account initially i deactivated it i made a new one in which i only subscribe to the club and there's a very good strategy also like if you have like you know when you log on to facebook if you already you have your time. friends and everything yeah. you you would put some time but here you know i'm directly into the completely group. focused yeah. for this year Did you utilize the eMedicos app also that we have yes, and the sir. previous papers that we have put on it? Yes sir. Uh those were uh, the last three or AMS and PGI papers were really useful. Uh that's that was my only source for those papers because the questions from other sources tend not to be very, answers from other sources tend not to be very trustworthy and even the questions after taking the exam I felt some of the question books that came out had modified the options or questions uh to suit a particular answer which is not the case so i found this a very reliable source with good um with yeah with good references you yeah, because now that you've been with us for last 4 years you know you might have noticed that you know after every exam you know you'll see teachers interacting think, with students yes. finding out what has been asked answering them so because of that exercise that we have been doing for almost two decades now now we we rely on our own recall yes sir and what i have seen is every time you know a student would come to me sir can you tell me this question and i was a, in which exam was this i said this was in last year aims and i'm like it was not there <laughs> you, know, you know so sometimes there are so many questions in those guide books which are framed by Where people who have else. written the guide yes. they are not in the real exam and so it is so shocking that i am like i am like it cannot be there because last 20 years i know every question that has been asked <laughs> it is not possible that you are you know uh, saying but then uh, you know sometimes uh, you know you get uh, you know sued by you, you know you get pulled by the you know marketing that the guide books we'll do that okay do, we yes. have the real question another thing that i wanted to ask was that you, did you utilize the video solutions also that we had put for the papers uh so not all of them just the immediate last aims your paper yes. and neat paper those are the only ones i was able to see if i had more time i would have definitely gone through more videos do you think that the video based discussion of papers is more Use, uh, useful to uh, you know it's definitely at? because it you again it's the same thing teachers will teach you how to understand what the question is asking it's not just question they can answer rightly and that's all your purpose because it's not going to be the same question next year so you need to understand how to think about the question now prana i also want to know from you now is like you have given this neat pg exam yes, like and this was a 300 question paper yes, computer sir. based slightly longer than yes, the sir. other exam that you might have, have given taken. so what was your paper taking strategy during the exam like how did you, you mentally prepare and what did you actually do in the paper uh my uh, neat questions i found tend not to be very controversial there's always a clear cut answer so my strategy was to finish it as fast as possible in the first go so i finished my paper in 2 hours then i had one and a half hour to go through the entire paper again and uh, change any questions which i felt that i might not have thought thoroughly i think in the first go of the exam you tend to be exhausted by solving the questions again and again so in the second go you will be changing answers and mostly they tend to be correct changes uh and you're more confident of guessing things i think in the first go if you got five six questions that you didn't understand it didn't re really remember you'll tend to guess the next one just so that 
because you are scared and in the second go you won't be you will be a lot more confident so you will be able to think clearly um how many did you attempt uh, i attempted 286 questions out of 300 and i felt later that that was an under attempt because when in sec came back and checked those questions i could have gotten a lot more questions correct if i had been more confident so i should i think everybody should attempt as close to a 100% attempt rate as possible Yeah, you know, but I what I want to add here is that you know why she has gotten a good rank here is we have to understand that when she was giving the exam, she had a very good strategy in mind. She know she had an idea that this is going to be longer number of questions as yes. compared to the previous ones. So you kept the pace faster from Fa- the quite fast. beginning yes, itself. Sir. You were not like, pehle in the first fifty questions you were spending two hours, mm-hmm. then you like you were like on the, you know uh, you wanted to go about it. Yes, sir. And you started with the intent that okay, I, even if I'm short of time, I'm finishing my paper. My, yes, sir. And you ended up finishing it pretty fast. Yes, sir. And that gave you a lot of time to think on things that you did not know. Yes, sir. And uh, she attempted a decent number. Maybe you could have done a little higher, considering it yeah. was a doable paper. Yes, sir. And, uh, it was and, quite doable. And uh, like, uh, how many questions did you mark for review? Like, uh, uh, many people would be. wanting to know that i think not more than 20 25 questions and at the end i didn't leave any for review because of the confusion that these people have created about if it's going to be evaluated or not so oh, well usually in neat they say it is evaluated, evaluated but, yeah you know, in aims it is not so you, you were like wide, wide, wide risk <laughs> yeah so you marked a few for review but you managed to see the entire paper, paper again in the because end. of the time management and this is very key to know that in a exam like neat time management is a very very important part of your strategy any other thing about the paper on the day of the exam anybody should do about the paper taking strategy that you want to i think highlight. you should get a good sleep before you go don't try to cram up everything because it's all about thinking in those 3 hours and i i mostly found the paper was from notes that i had made it, made in dams classes i with the i didn't i don't recommend any other source for a neat exam just stick to what they're teaching you and be really thorough with it And same for PJ. I've sorry for interrupting okay. you. And I also want to know from you, like when you were giving the exam, like we, you told us about the strategy of the exam, like. But now, if you have to advise to a future NEET aspirant, yes, anybody sir. who wants to appear for NEET PG, what uh, you know, what would you tell them about the paper? Like this was the paper, like oh, how many questions were on which subject, or you do you want yes. to you know tell them uh, about the there paper? There was there were the paper was in three sections. The first part of the paper had fifty questions. This was uh, first year subject. Second part was second year subject plus PSM. It had seventy five questions, and the third part was one fifty questions for all your clinical subjects. Uh, I uh, I think most of the visuals were concentrated in the last part there were almost no visuals in the first part um there were a couple of topics that were repeated again and again uh, uh so you need to be thorough with your basics the topics that are te- and those topics are tested here again and again they're taught very well they'll be taught uh, across multiple subjects and those are the same things that they're asking it's very important to know like you know sometimes in a exam like needs you have uh, more than one question on a topic like you have more than one question yes, on rubella So the challenge is that if you are not knowing that, you will lose out on two, three a questions. A lot of questions. And yes, suddenly, you know, just because you don't know a simple topic, you're losing out on three questions. Yes. It's sir. not just one. One question. Yes. So it's very important to be thorough on your basics. Is what she says after giving the exam. Yes. Sir. And she has given us a good insight that the part C was the longest. Part C had the more concentration of visuals. part uh, a and b were more textual well, questions okay, yes sir and uh, she also says that most of the questions were solvable if you have done the classes Just and notes thoroughly well uh, there will always be a couple of aberrant questions please don't waste your time on them just because it's a parks line doesn't mean you need to read parks in this year pehle padhi hai to theek hai but the now is not the time <laughs> it's very important that don't try to overdo like getting into perfection like i mean yeah. you know because i understand what she's saying that uh, don't try to be a perfect like you in internship you don't have time but you're trying to read textbooks everything. and uh, like park and everything and pehle pehle padha is good but in the last one month uh, you have to be smart mm-hmm. You you really have to focus only on high yield stuff. These first four kids who are in first four years, please study your standard textbooks. They're the best. They'll give you amazing concepts, and you can never compensate for that later. This is you are an MBBS doctor. You are supposed to know all this. This is you're not just doing this for entrances. So.
and this is part of the uh, entire process yes. it is not the end destination it's the end destination is that you want to become a great doctor great doctor and exactly so when you look at things with that perspective it becomes easier yes sir it, it becomes like you know that you're doing it for your livelihood for you know betterment of the society in general as well yes sir how did you keep yourself motivated during this entire time it must have been tough but how how did you manage um i i just kept my focus on this one thing i i think i cut, during the last month or so i cut out on all social commitments i completely isolated myself from other people except a certain few and i think that's very important cut out all the negativity in your life focus on what you want and you will get there i am um, it is very important what she has said and what is what she has told us here is that you know make sure that you have friends that is important but few but you know, too many people having opinion on what is being done what to what you should have been doing yes would actually sap away your energy which can be put into constructive study so you know what i like about her entire strategy was that she balanced it beautifully you know she was more about theory concept building notes making in yes, the initial sir. part test in the later part and by the end you know she she knew that this journey has to end well so <laughs> she cut out all the <laughs> negative people remain positive and you know repeat to yourself that okay i am going to do it i'm going to do it <laughs> yes, and <laughs> cut out all the negativity is is way that, that is you know the way it is to be done you know many people you know once they don't do well in an exam they come back to me and say sir what should i do to improve it you know you have to keep it simple the idea has to be building up cont- content then test practice test practice in subject wise manner then in a full course manner then in a exam like manner yes sir and then maintaining your positivity cut out on the negativity maintaining your own motivation yes sir and go and give a good exam yes sir and on the exam day have a good sleep sleep yeah then do it in a aggressive manner make it count don't mess up the real exam you know it is as direct and simple as that but sometimes what happens is when you're not doing well you uh, tend to get attracted towards perfectionism and you tend to get attracted that okay i have to maybe this time i will do harrison in my drop and now what happens is in january 31st the result is not good they start reading harrison and till the time may aims comes you have only done two three chapters yeah. or maybe five chapter 10 chapters of harrison and instead of doing smart study yes you know smart so, study is very important so what what i like about her approach is that she has been very simple about the way she has gone yes, about sir. it and that is the crux of a competitive exam you have to start with content go with test practice then give a good exam yes and one thing i'd like to add aim high uh, mm-hmm. never never settle never think ki itni rank aa jayegi to chal jayega because uh, there's at least matlab everybody in top 100 ranks was aiming at rank 1 and the, so you can't aim at 50 to 100 and expect ki tumhari wahan aa jayegi then you'll be really far behind aim for the top every single time any particular teachers and dams that you remember today or you want to mention uh sir uh, i really like to thank you and deepthi ma- ma'am uh, arvind sir of medicine great concepts throughout um uh, yeah i know Ar- arvind is such a good teacher you know he is able to make medicine very easy any other teachers that you remember today uh sir uh, git surgery by rajiv tiwari sir his notes are my go to source for git surgery to this day uh for ent deepak arora sir taught us and i've never found anything no question in any exam has been from outside what he taught us ruchi ram i'm taught optha which is really good uh, psm was covered at different times by both siddharth shekar sir and rajiv shetty sir and in foundation you know you would have a different dnd yes, you might have a different yes sir uh, so so uh, biostats epidemio amazing and updates i think rajiv shetty sir posted a video which is very very relevant at the exact right time uh for uh, psyche uh, rajiv sir taught us which is really good uh, it cleared up a lot of con- concepts pediatric siddharth sir's notes are amazing uh they very good the all your exams will test you on those concepts only uh definitely stick to those micro surya sir uh i attended this test and discussion and i revised it multiple times it was very very high yield uh for pat sanjeev sir i did his test and discussion again 
and i think he focuses a lot on the topics which are repeated a lot of times in sort of controversies also and he won't uh, these topics are not covered anywhere else uh for derma sarjindal sir's book i have been studying from third year and his test and discussion was something i attended again uh, he's made all the derma concepts i've had today ortho to shar sir and for uh, forensic mohit sir with uh, were really nice classes and did you attend the dvt as well you know my yes uh, so the dvt was it, it was quite a fun experience i know that seems like you know dirty to say but it was uh, a lot of fun and we learned a lot uh, the images uh, a lot of images were direct repeats especially in neat Uh, so if, if it's a good investment of your time and plus you know you know when you look back you know it's very important to see when you look back after winning those hard hours they feel feel fun <laughs> <laughs> so it's very important to reach to this point to actually feel the value of uh, the work that you put in yes sir so whenever you're working keep remember remembering the line that she said that these these are investments that you put in to get into the position that she is in right now you invest your work with hard work yeah. with time yeah. and then when you look back after a few years they will all seem fun <laughs> easy yeah, to do you know it would not like, be you no know, when you are into it it seems very difficult but when you are out of it it to look or it was all only what we were doing was studying yes sir and plus in the end never forget that you are studying to become a better doctor also yes sir so you know everything adds up and now you know i'll ask you a final question here i want you to say something motivating to future aspirants um i will uh, okay this was something i'd written on my wall for a really long time you need to train like a winner there's no alternative training is the painful part but training is what makes a difference between a person who wins and person who loses is the final mantra and with this i would like to congratulate you once more on your achievement thank and you so much i'm sir. sure you'll make a great choice you are rank 1 in delhi today and you have all the choices for you i'm thank sure you. you'll pick up a, a good branch may i ask you if you have you still decided or you still thinking <laughs> sir i haven't decided yeah, yet i'm still thinking and that is okay you know you have to take your time in these decisions i, I totally appreciate and i would also like to take this moment to congratulate everyone in your family and i'm Thank sure you. for them also it would be a landmark day yes and i wish you all the best for your future thank you so much Hardest sir congratulations thank you sir thank you